miss Colombia when I was away. Not the country, the coffee. I had to use Nescafe Gold. 91.3 kilos this morning, no weight change from Mykonos, which was nice. So we pretty much, we pretty much held when we was away. We are up in five weeks, 2.9 kilos, so about an average of 0.5 to 0.6 key per week, which is bang on the money with what I wanted to hit throughout this. Small gaining phase, we've got seven weeks to go before we get another DEXA scan. That's all booked in. So then we can compare how, from the previous DEXA scan, how, how well we've got on during this gaining phase. And then in seven weeks time, we dip back down into a deficit, clean things up for six weeks before our BFA. Then when we're back from BFA, we join Callum. Circuit done, ab circuit done, 5k steps, sauna steam. Going in for meal number one now, which is 100 grams of the chocolate shreddies. Still yet to find the white cocoa, but I found them and was in, but they're always out of stock. But the response and the feedback is that they're not they're very nice anyway, so I still want to try it for myself. 100 grams of shreddies, two of the Tesco Finest Luxury Hot Cross Buns, nice and easy to digest. We have 40 grams of jam, so 20 on each, and then protein sauce we're going for. 150 grams of egg whites and one whole egg. Well, that's Kuchen, we'll go through supplementation. I reached out to, to Bridgman because when I transition from like a conscious prep or dieting phase into a gaining phase where food is increased, my digestion takes a little hit. So I, I spoke to Bridgman and he recommended the, the Now company for a super enzyme. So I've been using that past couple of days, been effective. The usual Dr. Dean's kidney and blood pressure stack been using this for uh, since it came out four pills a day and 3000 milligrams of the krill oil get these from amazon the best naturals and whilst breakfast is being consumed i'll sip on my alpha line superhuman greens one of the only greens that i can really stomach i'm tending to prefer the mango flavor to the apple the mango has grown on me as you know i was using the holland and barrett the holland and barrett greens but they stopped doing them Plus the Holland about greens had no flavor and they tasted absolute shite. I don't know if this is plain weird or if anyone else does it, right? But do you eat your foods in a, mm, I might edit this out. No. Do you eat your certain foods in a certain order? I've got an omelet here and two hot cross buns. I'll have half the omelet, protein, one hot cross bun, finish the omelette, finish the hot cross bun, and then have my cereal. It's got to be at least one weirdo that does that as well. Just to make it easier for people from a health standpoint, the accumulation of all of these, we can split this up into sort of heart health, liver, and then anti-inflammatory. I am consuming 3,000 milligrams of krill oil, 500 milligrams of the citrus bergamot, We've got 200 milligrams of CoQ10, that's 100 milligrams in support max and also 100 milligrams in the, in the liposomal. And then you've got Hawthorne Berry at 550 meg, Tudka 250 meg, N-acetylcysteine 1000 milligrams, then we've got liposomal glutathione at 500 milligrams. And then the anti-inflammatory is the liposomal curcumin from supplement needs. I'm going for it. As soon as I'm not going Kappa next week, they might be partaking in any water drinking. Oh, I'm gonna push it today. I've never taken one whole scoop of MV Pre. I've always been a half scooper and then add in some Komodo pump for the additional cognitive enhancement or add in some additional Alpha GPC from Supplement Needs for that, wherever it is, for that cog cognitive benefit. I'm one scooping today, which will give me 350 milligrams of the caffeine and the 100 milligrams of the Arad Geronesis. Used to taking 50 meg. See you on the other side. The taste is too good to neck. You can enjoy it. Roadside lemonade. One's good with MV pre done, featuring Tell of Us, Time Warp, Trippy Shit. Hola, que tal? Una agua. Una agua, por favor. 107 beats per minute my heart rate, so usually I'm on about 60. I respond like that to stimulants. Anyway. Got a fan. Got an oscillating fan from Tesco. 
How bloody hot was it on Saturday? Went to Margate with Joe, it was good. How are we? Welcome to another, another TMC voice over hamstrings and back today. As I mentioned before in previous videos, taking that additional rest day between the quads and delts and hamstrings and back is benefiting my training performance perfectly. I, I felt that I was still fatigued going into that second session and my quads and delts on my hamstrings and back are my two most taxing sessions, especially for the quad work and it was just, even if I had a, a good quality sleep and I had all the variables in place in terms of supplementation and nutrient timing, I was still lagging and, and I'm not on a blast at the moment. My testosterone is pretty much mimicking that of a cruise dose. I've dipped that right down to 125 now. So even at the start of this gaining phase when food is slowly increasing, it was still lagging a little bit. Taking that additional day was perfect and I can go in and perform strong movements like the RDL. So last week, 180 key for eight. This week, I decided to go up five key and was expecting to pull back a little bit and aim for the sort of six to seven repetition range, but was solid. And I did an Instagram post on all of the variables that can be put in play for optimizing training performance, not only on an off season, but also on a contest prep as well. So that day in between my quads and delts and hamstrings and back, I'm solely dedicating to as much recovery as possible, getting in a few naps if, if I can do, if work's not too hectic because those two back-to-back -back are, are, are very, very fatiguing. My other sessions are still, it's not like I'm not backing off and they're my two strongest sessions or my two heavier sessions, my other sessions are, but in general, they're, they're, they're very, very fatiguing and very, very taxing in terms of the movements that I'm using. But training is going fantastic at the moment. We are, what, seven weeks in, the, the scale weight is going up. In terms of my morning weigh-ins, the weight is going up on the bar in terms of the gym. So that's a, a sign for me that then I increase my food and I increase my food. So in terms of calories at the moment, 550 carb is going down nicely. I've increased my fats a little bit this week just to, to pull food up from different areas, not just carbohydrates and see how my body responds. And 92.2 this morning. So big weight jump this morning, which was fine. Body composition is still relatively tight for what it is. And I will continue and probably not lose any more composition from what I'm at now. What I'm at now is a, a, a body composition that I'm very, very happy with and also a body comp that will allow me to get in relatively decent condition in six weeks before I beef her. And essentially what we'll be doing is we'll, we'll be utilizing almost like a rebound off the back of that six week I beef her cut and probably considering that I beef her, I won't be consuming a huge amount of food anyway, so I'll be losing, losing weight out there. And that's when we'll be jumping on back on board with Callum, using that deficit that we've been in for six or seven weeks to go back into an off season. And and like I'm not gonna, I don't, I know I don't do things by half measures, but I don't want to be in a position where I undo all this hard work in this gaining phase when we do dip it, dip down into that deficit. I'm gonna be very very meticulous in not losing too much tissue during that phase, trying to nail, nail condition. Not, I'm not concerned about being fucking dice dice for Ibiza, but to get my abs back. I am the individual where as soon as I start eating, my abs are just really turned to sort of fluff and, and I hate it, but it's the whole part of the gaining process. Anyway, that was a, a solid session. Hey, I'll catch you in the next clip. A fantastic session. 185 for eight. I aim for 185 for six on the lower end of the rep scheme because we did 180 for eight last week but well not last week before we went on holiday mv pre was good no crash either i was expecting to start having some work done with lauren and just completely crash but no crash which is good it seems like my pick major is so tight that it every time she goes over with my shoulder like it pops but then when you apply pressure to that pick major it's smooth so it seems like this is really tight causing a bit of internal rotation, did some work today, Feel, feels perfect. So fortnightly with Lauren and it's, it's, it's really working, it's helping, it's helping a lot. And it's making my sessions for like back movements a lot more enjoyable. So because we had quite a extended time training and then got some treatment, I just had a protein shake, one scoop of the muscle sport lean way about an hour ago. So quite hungry now and we'll go for post-workout.
Post workout meal number one was 100 grams of shreddies. Now that's been consumed, then 150 grams of chicken's being cooked alongside the, a full pack of Uncle Ben's rice. I need some help because the parakeet situation here is, is getting worse. Can you hear them? They're going from like that tree to that tree. I'm gonna have to get a gun, a BB gun. Has anyone watching this had problems with parakeets? What do you do? Because I don't want to buy a BB gun, because that's terrible. But it's get, I'm getting close, because I'm going to have to get rid of them. I can't do podcasts, I can't do voiceovers, because they're so noisy. I've had to close the windows in the gaff, but because it's summer, I'm boiling hot now. I need someone to help me out. Down it went. Once He's killed it! He just shot it! Hunter criticised for video guide showing how to kill parakeets. I mean, is it illegal or morally wrong? Because I'm okay with the morally wrong. Just joking, I'm not really going to kill them. I am going to have to reach out to someone though, because they're doing my head in. How about we members? The windows are firmly shut to eliminate any parakeet noises. They're becoming quite a, an annoyance. In today's video, we're going to go over how to mix HCG. It seems to be quite a common occurrence, and there's a few questions in the forum as well about how to mix HCG. Every morning, every time I come to Shoreditch, I tell myself I'm gonna get a coffee and a croissant, but I never do. Because I feel like a total slut when I do eat a croissant. It just feels, is this on 50 frames at the moment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels more like, ch -ch -ch, like gamified, doesn't it? Anyway, Tom's vlog. Um, hope you're well. I'm a little bit chunky since you last saw me. I had a haircut yesterday. <laughs> bit of a beard. Not really like, do I get the guy to do my beard? But he'd probably put on an extra tenner. He'd think he yeah. probably won't even do it right anyway. So I decided to opt out a bit. I didn't have enough time yesterday. Um, putting Lyra down. I mean, she goes down at seven. She's up at 7.30. She don't go back to sleep. And then I'm up and down like a yo-yo. Anyway, back to Tom. Enjoy the rest of the show. I'm buzzing. Oh, TM cycles. Oh, this is the prototype. This isn't the final product, but the embroidery t-shirts are in, stitched on. I felt that this particular design, although it looks okay, when you put it in the wash, it kind of fades a little bit. And generally the whole feel is a little bit cheap. And I don't like that. So I decided to go for the embroidery t-shirts. I had to buy a 10 because the, it was the minimums. And um, been back and forth with the with the manufacturers. What is happening now is the labels are coming off. So we've got our own TMC labels being put in and also very, very similar to the Billionaire Boys Club, we're getting a hem tag put on. So like with the Billionaire Boys Club, we'll be putting a, a letter T on there as well. So very, very excited. Very, very excited indeed. It's taken a, a long time coming. Generally just the first few weeks were getting different t-shirts sent over from different companies because I wanted to nail that first before we looked at the design. So I think I ordered about five or six from one company, about four from another, and we've gone for the Russell heavyweight t-shirts. As I mentioned before, they've got these they've got this back panel, which is really nice and it, it sits nicely as well. You know, when you get those t-shirts that don't sit very nicely on the on the shoulder and it pulls up and you get this horrible sort of flary t-shirt look. So all in all very, very excited. We have processed to the next stage. We're getting 25 printed in black, 25 printed in white, and also 25 printed in limited edition. Orange, which will be released the day after. I'm gonna give these away on Instagram. I'm gonna do a little giveaway now and give them away and just keep one for myself, but very, very excited. TMC clothing coming soon. I've gone rogue. I've gone rogue. I've gone prep today for a coffee. Notice that the caffeine content is considerably less than Costa. Costa up there with very high caffeine content in their coffees, which is not really what you want as a bodybuilder when you're using pre-workouts. Because it contains less caffeine in there, just tastes like warm fucking milk. 
Manufacturers have sent over the hem tags and the neck tags for season one of TMC clothing, which look banging. Kingsley has also sent over the images for season two of clothing, which is El Clasico. What I wanted to try and do there is, if anyone's seen Scarface, you know the world that has, the world is yours, and there's like females holding the world. I said to Kingsley, look, I really like this design. Is there any way that we can incorporate me doing a vacuum holding the world and on the world it says TM Cycles and then the second image is the image that's got to go on the back. I don't know if this t-shirt has it. Does it have it? Yeah. And then what I want to do is have a, a consistent theme of an image on the back of every t-shirt. So that'll be season two of the clothing range and then we're going to Ibiza in September, end of September. And I really, really, really want to get an Ibiza range out, like just the one or two t-shirts before we go. So it's July, January, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. So we've got three months and the manufacturers are really, really good and they turn it around quickly. So this is the labels. So we've got the sleeve, the hem for sleeve, which is very similar to that right there. It'll be having a tea. And then instead of having like a disgusting Russell heavyweight or like a fruit of the loom. Obviously, I'm not a fucking fruit of the loom. Ripping, ripping them out and the TMC. Hey, Luke. Hey, look the heck the uh, the hem tags are in. Beautiful. I saw on the gram. Oh yeah, Instagram was down though. Oh, oh I would, no, I wanted you in. Oh, all right, sir. I was just admiring your camera. I pick up two faces. Why can't I pick up one? It the I got asked a question yesterday on the Instagram Q and A about. Why I take the piss out of reps in reserve like RAR, RP scale. I don't really take the piss out of it. It's just my stance on training is that we take things to failure. There's a very large emphasis on recovery. But the PTC Collective, aka the old Trilly by Science, was it from Mass as well, most yeah. recent, did a post on Barbosa and other study where they had, I think it was 20 trained individuals get asked to do 10 rep max on their bench press and on average, 16 perform plus five reps, and 13.8% of the subjects perform more than 20 reps. So that's just a, a, clar Ridiculous. a clarification that the reason why I'm not a huge fan of reps in reserve and not RAI is that RPE scales that no one can really gauge their true things taken to failure. No, I mean, unless you're like a, an, a, a trained subject in a research mm. study is different than what we would classify as someone trained. Mm. So, do you know what I mean? They say trained in it could be they were just trained for a year or they yeah. trained in something else. So. And another limitation, probably the bench presses might not be the best exercise yeah. to do, but it still goes to show in people's minds if you're told to do 10 reps and these people are doing double that, 20. Well, 20, that's ridiculous, mm. isn't it? So it's, um, you just don't know. That's why they use like this, the speed things as well to see yeah. how much it slows down. But yeah, I suppose you don't know what's happening in that study that they could have like all the other people around and go, like, come on. Yeah, exactly. Push, push. You've got that to take into account, but mm. no way should you. But if I put 10 RM on there, at best if someone's shouting at my face, I'd probably get 12. Yeah, 12 a push, yeah. Out of push. Not 20. Anyway, I'm gonna leave the video there. I'm not going to Kappa Festival this weekend. I'm going to RTS. It should be good. Although Deborah DeLuca's playing at Fabric on Friday and I've still got a Gary left in the drawer from We Are Festival. Well, that's sandwich, Gary. I'll leave it there. Thank you, good night. Much love.